Hey everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet the very smart looking aligned puff stitch. If this is your first visit to my channel, it would be amazing if you just took a moment to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my future crochet videos. Now this blanket I am currently working on is absolutely massive so that I'm already fighting to try and get it to stay on the table. It's absolutely huge. It's about three or four foot wide and it just goes on forever. It's beginning to weigh a bit of a ton. Now the yarn I used for this blanket is just scrap yarn and I'm afraid I don't know the brand. These yarns were all in a massive great big bin bag, literally a bin bag, handed to me by my very lovely neighbour who just couldn't store any of her yarn anymore so she just literally gave me a massive bin bag and went there you go go nuts so what I did was I pulled out a whole range of colors I lined them up in a vague rainbow order and then I joined them together with a magic knot to basically make a whole load of scrap yarn balls so that I could just sit down and crochet the whole lot. Now the puff stitch is a hungry stitch, but that's why I absolutely love it for scrap blankets. Nothing eats through your yarn stash faster than a puff stitch. <laughs> now you are free to change color on either the puff row itself or the single crochet row. Now I personally think changing color on the single crochet row looks the best. So if you do want to have sort of blanket with clear defined color blocks in, then definitely change color on the single crochet rows. All right, without any further ado, let's jump straight on in to how you do the very smart aligned puff stitch. So with your chosen yarn for the aligned puff stitch, because we're working with puff stitches, I always advise going up a hook size slightly. So this yarn here is recommending to me to use a four and a half to five millimeter crochet hook. So I'm actually going to go ahead and up the hook size slightly and use a five and a half millimeter crochet hook instead of the maximum five that they recommend. This is just to keep my puff stitches nice and loose and therefore nice and puffy. So the aligned puff stitch is a multiple of two. That's it. So once you have your slip knot on your hook, you're just going to chain in multiples of two, so an even number for as wide as you want your project to be. Now I'm just going to be doing a very small sample, so I'm gonna go ahead and chain 14. So I have my 14 chains, so you will have whatever even number has taken you to the desired width for your project. Now this loop on your hook does not count as anything. So we're going to be counting the chains that are hanging down from your hook. So we're going to ignore this first chain and we're going to work into the second chain here. So into the second chain from your hook, not this one, this one, you're going to place a single crochet. Then chain one, skip a chain, single crochet into the next. Chain one, skip a chain, single crochet in the next. And you're going to do this for the full length of your chain, so all the way down. Chain one, skip a chain, single crochet in the next. So when you've reached the very last chain, you will be ending on a single crochet. You'll have a sort of janky looking chain here with single crochets and chain one spaces in between. So on to row two, which is the first of the two row repeats, you're going to chain two and turn your work. Now we're going to be placing all our stitches into this chain one space in between your single crochets from the row below. So you're going to be aiming for this space here. And we're gonna go straight ahead 
and pop a puff stitch into this chain one space here. Now it is completely up to you how puffy or not you want your puff stitches to be. So if you want them fatter, add more yarn overs. If you want them a bit skinnier, use less. But for mine, I used four yarn overs. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do a puff stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook into that chain one space, pull up a loop and pull it up nice and high so it's in as high up as you can pull it. Again, yarn over, go back into that same chain one space, pull up a loop and pull it up nice and high. Again, and then one more time. So if you're doing the same amount of yarn overs as I have with the four, you will have two, four, six, eight, nine loops on your hook. Now, as I said, if you want it even fatter, continue doing that yarn over and pull up a loop. Or if you want it skinnier, drop one of those yarn overs and just do three. So to complete your puff stitch, you're going to yarn over and you're going to draw through all bar this one loop. So pull through all loops except that very last one and you'll have two loops left on your hook. Then yarn over and pull through both those loops. Chain one. And again, you're going to work your puff stitch into this chain one space from the row below. Once you have all the loops on your hook, pull through all except that very last one. So you have two loops, yarn over, pull through both those loops to complete your puff stitch. So you're going to continue this all the way to this very last chain one space of your row. Chain one, puff stitch in the chain one space. From the row below, chain one, puff stitch in the next chain one space from the row below, chain one, puff stitch in the next chain one space from the row below all the way along until you are at your very last chain one space. So I'm just finishing up my final puff stitch into that very last chain one space here. I've just finished my puff. I'm not going to chain one. Instead, I'm going to end with a half double crochet into that very last stitch. Now it will be curved around because that is the first single crochet you did on your initial foundation chain row. So hunt for that stitch, it's just here, and pop a half double crochet into that stitch. So you'll have a chain two, puff stitch, chain one, puff stitch, chain one, puff stitch, chain one, all the way along. And then right at the end, you'll end with a puff stitch, straight then into a half double crochet. Now for the next row, which is the second row repeat of this two row repeat. You're going to chain one and turn your work. Now keep an eye on that stitch that you just chained from because we're going to place a single crochet immediately into that stitch there. So straight into the top of your half double crochet and then chain one, skip your puff and put a single crochet in that chain one space in between your puff stitches. Chain one, skip the puff, single crochet into that chain one space and do that all the way along and you will end with a single crochet into the top of the chain two 
turning chain from the row below. I am just about to get there anyway, so hang fire and I will show you where you place that very final stitch. So chain one and your last stitch goes in this chain two here. So you've got your puff stitch. If you pull it slightly, you've got the puff stitch here. Then you've got your chain two right on the edge. If you flip it, you'll see them there. One, two. So you're going to aim for the top section here and put your single crochet in there. You may need to fight it a little bit. And that's all there is to the aligned puff stitch. So for the next row, you would chain two, turn your work, place your first puff stitch in that chain one space in between your single crochets from the row below. Chain one, puff stitch into that chain one space. Keep going with your puff stitch and chain one. Once you've finished your final puff of the row, you don't chain one, you end with a half double crochet into the top of that single crochet, which will be curved around slightly. Then chain one, turn, place a single crochet to the top of that half double crochet. Chain one, and place your single crochet in between the puffs, chain one, keep going all the way back down the other way. So it's super duper simple. It's nice and fast to work up. Here I'm already at the end for chatting away. So you secure it with a single crochet into that chain two turning chain, if you can get your hook in there. But it gives a really nice smart appearance for your puff stitches rather than having them offset from each other and I particularly love how it is worked up in the blanket that I showed you in the intro. So that's all you have to do you're just repeating the puff stitch row and this single crochet chain one row and repeat for as long as your project is and it is completely up to you where you are end for the top row. Um, I know some people like to end on this single crochet row but I personally like to end on a puff stitch row so I would repeat the puff stitch row and then leave it at that point because then it matches the bottom down here but it's completely personal preference as to where you want to end it. If you were interested in learning how to do the sort of offset puff stitches, I do have a video on how to do exactly that, which I've linked to in the description box below, or a little eye will have popped up along the top here somewhere. So until next time, happy aligned puff stitching. <laughs> Bye.